We got a good friend, Dave Lashier, flatsnation.com. He's going to be up on the other side. Hopefully, we'll hear from you as well. Lots of stuff to talk about. It is good fishing out there, especially if you can get the weather. And uh, we got a little bit of wind coming, but uh, we'll have those days here where the weather's fantastic. So the bite will be awesome. 1 888 546 4620. Light them up. Welcome back. Time we got 741 here. The iHeart Media Empire. A friend of mine just texted on the text line hearing the South Seas Island Resort promo running. The commercial still running. Uh, made this gentleman wonder if we were, if they were still, if they were reopened. Uh, because as a lot of people know, the hurricane took uh, most of South Seas, put them in a, in a pretty bad place. Uh, I did have some conversations with Verdell and Charles down there this week, and they hope to be up full capacity, rocking and rolling by October. Um, wow. Or close to full capacity, ready to go. So They really took a hit. They took a bad hit. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of work going on down there still. So um, I, as a partner with South Seas, um, as obviously they had to to discontinue their advertising, for obvious reasons. Sure. Um, I just told them it wasn't going to happen. I'm not taking their advertisements down. Their their banner ad's still going to run on the TV show as well um, because they've been a great partner here of the Real Animals for many, many years. I'm just not going to do it. I want people to still hear about it, think about it, know That's it's awesome. an incredible place, and once it gets back up and running, you need to go there because uh, it's worth it. Every bit of it's worth it. The guides there are phenomenal. The people, again, Verdell Eckberg, and but top to bottom, they're just – they're just phenomenal people. So uh, cool text, and, and I appreciate that, Stuart. That's just uh, that's the deal. They're not open and ready to rock and roll right now, but it's it's coming. I Down bought a park. trip there at the Children's Home Tournament that you've got coming up again. Yeah, uh, we do. April Storm 21st. and Norman, and I guess a year ago I bought that uh, three-day, two nights down there. We'll talk to them. Oh, yeah. In October. Yeah, they'll get going again. It's uh, it's coming. they got a lot of work to do and a lot of cleanup, but – it's coming. Phone lines are open here this morning. We're talking fishing. Going to be here until 9 o'clock, 1-888-546-4620. If you want to join us, please do so. Let's go to the phones now. Check in with my good friend Dave Legere, flatsnation.com. Some great podcasts, always great information coming out of flatsnation.com. You be sure to check it out. How are you this morning, David? Well, greetings from the war zone on Pine Island, brother. You know, yeah. have to excuse me. I'm fighting with the latest crud going around. But, uh, uh, I just got, I just got over it. this morning. I just got over it, pal. Speaking of speaking of the war zone down there, how are uh, how are things for you guys on Pine Island? Getting back to any sense of normalcy yet? Slowly, very yeah. slowly. Yeah. Um, Chopping wood. When you're in an area that basically, I like to use the mathematical equation that one in every three houses is basically gone. Ouch. in some way shape or form it's just going to take time yeah. it's going to take a lot of time to get it back to the way it the way it was um there's still major cleanup going on right and uh and the water is you know from the as we were talking about before with these houses that were basically wiped off the face of the planet uh you're dealing with you know septic tank type issues where the leaching fields are now getting into the water so it's going to take it's going to take time to get it all turned back around. That's for sure. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, we, we being, you know, an hour and a half, <clears throat> two hours from a lot of this, we're far enough away that we don't think about it every day, but there's still a lot of people down there grinding and struggling. I know the great Ozzy Fisher, some of his posts, I know he got to run a trip or two somehow, some way. And then he, in his post, he said it was back to garbage detail and they're just, you know, hiring these guys to just help load garbage onto trucks. I mean, that's how much mess is down there. So it it's is. crazy. Yeah. It's a mess. It is a mess. And it's going to take a while. But, you know, I wanted to personally thank everybody who's been coming down and helping us, um, getting everything turned back around. And um, some places are starting to reopen. Um, I know our partners at Pine Island Welding are really busy because there's a lot of welding that needs to be done. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, yeah. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Just wanted to let everybody know we have a new podcast up, um, episode 13, with our Fast Nation captain, Justin Backard, on Big Pine Key. 
Nice. Should enjoy that one. Yeah. And uh, as I was letting you know, all of our earlier shows just remixed them. Okay. And um, they should stream right on your phone quite well now, so you can listen to them while you're in the in the truck or running on the skiff. What platform are you on, Dave? We're running on ours the- on Flats Nation. Okay, I got you. All right. Okay. So when you go to our podcast page, all you have to do is push play. Okay. You're streaming them straight from Flats Nation. So I nice. think that's great. You're not uh, going to another place to find them or get lost. And right. It works well. Good. Good. Well, good. I really enjoyed that part of the programming of it. Yeah. Um, and it seems that my Detra article that you and I were discussing has really shoved a hornet's nest or stick in the hornet's nest for sure. Uh, seems that a lot we're not aware that there's a commercial take on those fish. Um, something that I think we need to change. I mean, I even dug around and I couldn't find trout on any of the restaurants that I could find around the state. So my question is this, where are all these game fish going that we can't find? It's a good question. <laughs> Solid question. I yeah. I, I just want to know where they're going. Right. Right. They're what, being taken. What are they using so, them for? Where who's eating them? Yeah. That's who's eating them? Right. Who's taking them? Are they taking them out of the state? Are they taking them out of the nation? Where Where are these fish going? Well, and and my frustration about that is is that the recreational anglers are getting beat up, you know, on on these fisheries, and then we we still have a commercial take on them. Like yeah. I don't if we're in exactly. if we're in a, if we're in a dilemma. I'm with you. If we're in a dilemma, well, if we're in if we're having an issue with a species, everybody by now has heard my voice for way too many years now. You know where I stand. If there's an issue, shut it down. But shut it down across the board. Yeah. I mean, I, I right. don't I don't understand. Everybody. Right. Point shut it down for article. Yeah, for sure. Same way with red snapper or grouper. <clears throat> yeah. Do the same thing. Right. Yeah, it's just not good. Now, the bad news on the grouper side is I'm hearing from That's ridiculous, yeah. I don't know. It's ridiculous, dude. When when the people when Luis Barbieri is on board with something, it's not a joke. Barbieri is not a joke. He's not a paid politician. Barbieri yeah. gives gives two cents. Bro, I spent a lot of time with that guy. Um, he cares about that grouper fishery. Something's up there. He wouldn't be barking that loud, dude. Well, and it goes back to commercial. You want to look at where the fish are going. That's who's harvesting them. It's not recreational. The whole method of the way they do it and it's the same way inshore with sea trout like he's talking about you know it's crazy that they uh they tell us we're damaging the industry and all of a sudden you got a commercial catch on it that's out there hammering killing everything you know that's if there's a problem shut it off for everybody right across the board you know not for the guys getting rich on it 100 percent. i agree when you look at this from a pure economic standpoint and that's in the article when I did the research that recreational fishing in the state of Florida is about $9.2 billion annually. Commercial fishing, which I, I have nothing against that. That's how that's I get right. my seafood dinners. I sure. It's only a third of that. Only a third. But let's be even. So, is what? Yeah, right. Right. It needs right. to be. Well, and the bottom line is this. When it comes to the, to the economy of our great state, it's why we coined the phrase here on Flats Nation. It's real simple. No fish. No Florida. That is the major economic driver in this state for the Keys all the way up to the Tampa Bay area and even further north. Well, it's getting it's getting hotter. It's right. It's getting hotter and hotter. hotter. Sure. It's getting hotter and hotter across the board for sure. But when you have the situation where they're shutting down parts of the uh, taking sea trout to recreational fishing, so a father and his daughter can't go out there and catch a couple of them on a top water plug, which, you know, most of them, they're going to be releasing them anyways, yeah. but then allow commercial to go in there and take them. I, I just don't see the logic in it. I really don't. If you need to shut it down, shut it down for everybody. And as I was pointing out in the article, I think we need to divide up the management areas on sea trout like they have with redfish so that if you do need to close it down in an area, it's a much smaller area that you're closing it down and a much smaller area that you're monitoring because sea trout is, it is the most popular game fish that we have in saltwater flats in the state of Florida. It's it's saltwater brim if you want to equate it to a freshwater. So we need to watch that species very closely and make sure that they're healthy because if they are, then the rest of the ecosystem. Well, and, and you know, there's there's something to be said because you, you're you're the fishing down in Charlotte Harbor, especially where the pressure has lessened since the hurricane, and where the the, the season stayed closed longer. That fishing is off the chain. 
The fishing in Charlotte Harbor is really, really good. Really good. Everyone I've talked to said it is absolutely stupid. Really big trout down there now. There's a lot to be said for those fisheries staying closed longer. We do not have that same situation up here in Tampa Bay. We don't. Now, unfortunately, no, unfortunately, I hear there's some red tide creeping around Charlotte Harbor again, um, which isn't good. My friends at South Seas let me know that some had creeped in there into the marinas, so that's bad. But, you know, when you talk to these guys who are on the water every day and that fishery has really, really, really picked up, it really makes you wonder why we opened it here so early and left it closed down there. When you see the difference, you know what I mean? Yeah. When there's that big a difference in the fishery, something's up. So it's it's interesting. It's stuff we need to talk about and stay on top of. Dave Legier, flatsnation.com. Uh, always good to hear your voice, my friend. Stay in touch with us. Let us know what's going on there at flatsnation.com, and uh, we'll be pushing people your way. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Always good to hear your voice, brother. Be good. Good stuff right there for sure. Interesting. I'll tell you what, as, as hard as it is with the old – you know, long sleeve shirt on and over that. You can see the hair on the, I can see the hair on the back of Mahoney's neck stand up a little bit when you're talking about the well, and fishery and all that. You see him get feisty. You know, and I'm not bashing anybody, but it's like when, when somebody's giving us blowing smoke, I'm not going to look in their, whatever they're doing for honesty. Okay. If you're, if you're a liar, you're a liar. 100%. And if you do things that aren't right, you know, it's just like, I can't go catch this or that, but I can go in a store and buy it, or I can go hire a guide, you know, to go catch it. Right. That's BS. No, I agree. That's wrong. And they've separated us and all that stuff. And they try to make it seem like they're doing something for us. And this one's concerned about this, just like with big snook, everybody this 25 years ago, crying about big snook, uh, you know, one guy who comes in our store, I always jab Jay Keller and I did big duck hunter. He was one of them and he's probably listening, scared to call in, but call in and talk about it. Well, everybody talked about, no, can't catch a big snook. There's no big snook in Tampa Bay. You're wrong. You just didn't know how to catch them. And now everybody's catching them. So when you get into a situation, my opinion, no scientist, just a fisherman has been out there all his life. You start hammering grouper in an area and you're doing these surveys, so to speak, and you're doing all this stuff, them fish move just like redfish, just like the pelicans, the pelicans. I knew we were going to the pelicans. I yeah. knew we were going to the pelicans. You wonder why they're not on the bird sanctuary anymore because you've been tromping through there, grabbing them by their feet, trying to tag them, and now all of a sudden we don't have any. No, they left. Just like the fish that get beat up, they leave. We are catching gag grouper heavy eight years ago south. 35 to 70 foot of water trolling all year long. You remember that yeah. just hammering them to a day. If you want to call that hammering. Okay. They moved all them fish went up more to the North. And for the last six years, seven years, we've been going up there to do the same thing. Well, fish move. So if you're testing these fish in this one area and go, Oh my gosh, a grouper are gone. Well, they probably got out of there cause they're tired of getting messed with just like me or you would. Right. Walk to the bus stop, get beat up every day on the same corner. We're taking a different route. Right. I, I, I kill fish. I get it. What? <laughs> it's I get been it. a long time since Mahoney stood at a bus stop. <laughs> I'm just saying, good, good analogy, but I just can't picture it. Stood at the bus stop and didn't go. It. With serious supervision. Was, but serious, was it a short bus? Serious, serious supervision. Phone lines are open. We got a. Uh, we got a fire started here. If you want to join us, please do. 1-888-546-4620. Flatsnation.com. Stirring the pot this morning. We'll be back. Hope you enjoyed our show today and found it both educational and entertaining at the same time. If you or your company would like to join the team on Flats Nation for a podcast or other coverage, feel free to drop us a quick note at info at flatsnation.com. And now, here is the rest of the song to run the skiff back home with. Tight lines and God bless.